Okay, are we focusing on the 6 or the 2 minus 9x to the minus 1? Okay, who remembers their antiderivatives? 2 minus 9x to the minus 1. Is it power rule? 2 minus 9x to the 0? 1 over 0? Okay, so in case you forget and you try this, you think, oh, it's power rule, I'm going to add power. You get lots of warnings that something's wrong. Why? Because 2 minus 9x to the 0 is what? What's that? That's just 1, so you lose your function. And also, what's 1 over 0? Undefined. So it's like the warning bells are going off here. Something's not right. We just lost our x, we lost our function, plus we're trying to do 1 over 0, which just doesn't exist. Okay? So this is the exception to the power rule. What function, when you take the derivative of it, gives you something for the negative one? A few of you remember. What's this the same as? Just 1 over, right? 1 over 2 minus 9x. What function gives a derivative of 1 over 2 minus 9x? Natural log. Some of you are saying it. Not enough, though. Do you remember? So what's our attempt going to be? Natural log of what? 2 minus 9x. OK, so when you go backwards, because natural log is only defined for positive values of its argument, but this could be defined for all values of x, or negative and positive values of x, or negative or positive values of that. You need absolute values around the natural log when you, when you do antiderivative. Okay, so then we'll do plus c, and we'll do our check. What's our check? Derivative. So 1 over 2 minus 9x times what? Negative 9, right? Negative 9 by the chain rule. So we compare that to what we have here. And then we make an adjustment so that we think about if we were to alter this and then take the derivative of it, we want to get exactly this. So we actually have to make two changes here. What's the first change that we need? 6. Now I could have put the 6 there. I just, I just kind of I just overlooked it. I could have started the first attempt with a 6. We know that that's just a constant. So we're going to need that 6. But then what else are we going to need? We don't want this negative 9 when we take the derivative. So what will alleviate that? Negative 1 ninth. So we're going to have the 6 just carrying from the original problem. And then in order to avoid this negative 9, we need a negative 1 ninth. And now we're ready to check it again by taking the derivative of that. And if you take the derivative of that, do you get exactly what we started with? Yes, you do. You will. If you're not convinced, do it, OK? So now we can just simplify this. It's negative 2 thirds natural log 2 minus 9x. OK, if I lost you, ask. <clears throat> Did I lose you? Do you follow? Can I go on to the next one? So what this this was attempt number one. This is attempt number two. Okay, so then, so then you, you ask, when I start getting better at this, can I just try to include the factors that I need on the first attempt? Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't be afraid. Why, why, you don't have to be afraid because what can you do? Check it with a derivative, right? Check it with a derivative. So yeah, so 
once you start seeing what's happening, what's going on, that we're doing the chain rule in reverse, you can often anticipate these <coughs> extra factors that you need. And you can just go for it on the first attempt. But you can always go for it because you can always check it. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to feel like you have to get it right the first time. Okay? But that's ideal if we can. Okay, question? Um, how did you create So I talked about that was at the beginning of class. I talked about this. Every, we're doing every antiderivative of this, right? So because there's no limits of integration, it means any reset value. So any reset value. So then, the, so then this plus c is the minus f of a, right? It's the minus f of a. It's that constant that allows that it's, it's, this is a whole family of antiderivatives. It's like all the antiderivatives of that. Other questions? OK. <coughs> OK, so this one's a little interesting. You kind of have to have some problem solving skills here. Rather than, so we got, we know, tan, we got arc tangent. Rather than do 1 plus x squared to the negative 1, what do you see about this, this 1 plus x squared in the denominator? Do you recognize what's going on there? That's the derivative of arc tangent. So we can, instead, let's do this. Okay, so if we look back at our form here, what do we got? This thing that we're not focusing on, right, it's essentially the derivative of what's inside the thing we're focusing on. So which one is the derivative of which? Is 1 the derivative of 2 or is 2 the derivative of 1? All right, so which then is the f prime? 1 or 2? Two? 2. This is our f prime. So then this must be g prime of f. Hmm, okay, well, I see the f, but what about the g prime? What's the exterior function? Seemingly not there, right? It doesn't seem like there's an exterior function. So what is that exterior function? No, arctan is, is the f, right? Arctan is the interior because we're getting its derivative over here. What's that? What about 1? Right, so we're thinking like what function would have its derivative tan inverse of x? What function would have its derivative as tan inverse of x? Nope. Tangent inverse x to the? No, you're just, you can't, not negative 2 or 2, that changes it. Still has to be tangent inverse of x. To the what? No, to the second power is a different function. 1. It's to the first power. That's not a 2. That's a 1. It's tangent inverse to the first. It's still a 1. I'm just going to make it like that. There we go. Can you finish it now? Go, do it. Tan this function to the first power. Function to the first power. What's the antiderivative? <coughs> no. You're making it to that's he's not working. 
What is F and what is G inverse? What is F? Tan inverse. What do we do with that? We just leave it. We just leave it. All right? That's our, that's our F. So what's G prime? G prime is what? To the first. To the first. So what do we need? We need the antiderivative. G. What is it? Squared. Squared. One half. <coughs> right? Antiderivative of something to the first is one half that thing to the second. One half that thing to the second. If you do the check, it works. You get exactly this. That's it. Done. So this, you have to see that, that that thing is to the first power, and you're doing power rule, which will do one half of that squared. Do you recognize that? Okay, any questions? Does it make sense? Others? Yeah. Yeah, because it's the derivative of arctangent. That's what that's your rule for arctangent. The derivative is one over one plus x squared, right? You see? Yep that that is the rule for the derivative of that. So that tells us that's our f prime part. This must be the g prime f part. Other questions? Uh, okay, so let's look at, we can do those later. Let's, let's look at this. So now let's talk about more complex expressions. So we look at this, and if we're, if we're thinking maybe it's, if it's undoing the chain rule, then we have sine of 3 cosine x. Okay, and so remember that if it's if it's undoing the chain rule, it's we're looking for this kind of form. So if this is our g prime of f, what is f prime? What is f prime? Negative three sine x. Do we have negative three sine x in this integral? If this was indeed the g prime f, there'd also have to be something else, right? There'd have to be something like negative sine. Some factor of negative sine, which we don't have. It's not there. So this is not undoing the chain rule. It doesn't fit the form of, the, of a result of chain rule because it, it's missing that the derivative of the inside. It's not there. This negative sine x, it's not there. Okay? So it's not undoing the chain rule. <clears throat> but if we notice, we're also, you know, there's more going on here. So maybe we can make sense of it, even though maybe. Antiderivative, who knows, right? Okay, so we know that sine of 3 cosine x is a what? That's a ray function. And what does it mean? So we want to think about this. What does this mean, right? What does this mean? What is the integral from 4 to 7? Let's forget about the ddx first. So what is the integral from 4 to 7 of this rate function, dx? What does that mean? An 
Any you want to articulate? Just so, so uh, I'm going to make a blue box. What does this mean? The blue box. The blue, what's in the blue box is a derivative of something. Agree? What's inside the blue box is a derivative of something. Mm, no. What's inside the blue box? An accumulation, right? Tell me about this accumulation. A reset of four up until seven, according to that rate of change, sine of three cosine x. So we're going to re get a reset of four, and then we're going to accumulate starting at four according to that rate up till seven. What kind of thing will we get when we do that? Will we get a function, a formula, an expression, a number? What will we get? A number. This is a number. And what are we going to do to that number then? We're going to differentiate with respect to x. And what are we going to get when we do that? What's the derivative with respect to x of a number? Zero. So we want to come to expressions like this and make sense of them based on what things mean, right? Based on the things we've learned. The integral from 4 to 7 of some uh, rate function meaning we're accumulating with a reset at 4 up until 7, it's going to just give us an amount of accumulation, a value. And if we take the derivative of a constant, we get 0. All right, so maybe more interesting is this, then. So now we're going to have a reset at 4. Now what's in, in the blue box? Is it a number? No, what is it? Inside the blue box is how can you categorize that? It's a function. What kind of function? An accumulation function. This is an accumulation function now. With a reset of 4, accumulating according to this rate, right? So, is the derivative going to be 0? No. All right. So it's the same rate function for which we're not sure what the antiderivative is. But we can just we can just call it something. We can just call it say capital F. So we can call let's call that oh sorry. You know this is a rate function. And even though we don't know what the anti, we can't immediately get an antiderivative easily. Okay, or maybe there's no, maybe there's no closed form antiderivative at all. Okay, maybe there's no closed form antiderivative at all. We can still call it f. So say, suppose capital F is an antiderivative of this. Sine of 3 cosine t. Then would you agree that, I guess this is actually f of, right? So then would you agree that if, if capital F is an antiderivative, then that accumulation function could be written as f of x minus f of a, where a is what? 4, right? f of x minus f of 4. So capital F is our antiderivative, and therefore we get f of x minus f of 4, and we're taking what? We're taking the derivative of that. Okay? So now we're taking the derivative of this function's antiderivative in this first thing. The derivative of the antiderivative of that. What is that? It's, back. it's the same thing, right? So... If, if capital F is an antiderivative, that means that its derivative is that. 
And what's the derivative of f of 4? It's 0, right? So it's derivative of a constant. <coughs> so what do we get? We get the rate of change function. So if we take the derivative of this accumulation function that resets at 4, we get the derivative is the rate of change function. That was the rate we were accumulating it at the first place in the first place. Okay, so before before you think, oh, now I know how to get the answer. I know all that stuff in the middle just doesn't, doesn't matter. Look at this example. So all that stuff in the middle definitely matters. Okay, making sense of what what all that is. All right, so look at this. Not that. This. Okay, so first of all, let's ask the question, is this the result of undoing the chain rule? Yes or no? Is this the result of undoing the chain rule? Is this like g prime f of x? Why or why not? Because it would have to be, it would have to be this. Our rate function would have to be Something like that. Is that what we have? What's missing? Something w to the what? What's missing? W to the what? The rate of change. The rate of change of the interior, right? W to the what's missing? To the 1. W to the 1 is missing. We could only do undoing the chain rule if we also had a factor in here of W to the first, which we don't have. It's not there. If there was a W to the first times this, then we could undo the chain rule and get, get an antiderivative pretty easily. But without that W there, it doesn't fit the form of a chain rule derivative. Does that make sense? So it's not undoing the chain rule. But so what can we do? So maybe it has a closed form antiderivative, maybe it doesn't, but we can call that closed form antiderivative something, capital F. Call it capital F. What? I guess I'm writing. Here we go. All right, I'm writing. So we're going to call it F. So we're going to let F, let capital F, be the antiderivative, a, a antiderivative, an antiderivative of what? Square root of 1 plus w squared. And if that's the case, then this is the same as d dx of what? f of e to the 4x minus f of negative 5. Are we good so far? So we don't know what capital F is. Maybe it doesn't exist in closed form, but we're calling it it's an antiderivative of this function square root of 1 plus w squared. Okay, so now derivative of a difference is derivative the difference of the derivatives, right? <coughs> Second term, the derivative of capital F of negative 5 is? That's the easy part. That's 0. Derivative of a constant is 0. OK, so now this first part. So. If capital F is the antiderivative, and we take the derivative of that, what are we going to get? We'll get the square root of 1 plus e to the 4x squared. Is that it? What kind of function is this? e to the 4x plugged into capital F. 
That's a composite function. How do we take the derivative of a composite function? What do we need? Chain rule, right? So we're going to need the chain rule on this, okay? So we just did the derivative of the exterior, which is our square root of 1 plus w squared, leaving the inside as it is. Now times chain rule, right? 4e to the 4x. So when we do this derivative, we still have to follow the chain rule. We still have to follow the chain rule. So this expression then equals, and this is minus 0, it doesn't just equal the square root of 1 plus w squared with the thing plugged in, right? Because when you plug that in, now you have a composite function. You need to use the chain rule on that, which would be f prime of e to the 4x times e to the, the derivative of e to the 4x, chain rule. Do you buy it? Do, do you see it? He likes it. Yeah, question. Uh, I understand that your thesis is trying to understand what's the fourth is the end here? Or, uh, is what? Like, is the last it's the same as this. It's the derivative of this. So this is an accumulation function. We're taking the derivative of an accumulation function that resets at negative 5 at this rate, but up until e to the 4x, not up till x, up to e to the 4x. So this is the derivative of that accumulation function. Yeah? No. Final exam. This stuff's on the finals, but not tomorrow. Study.